Let's go ahead and take a look at number 13, question answerer. This will open in Xcode and let's talk about answering questions. So here we're going to work on a function to make question bot answer questions. We're going to build the brains in the playground before we add it to an app. And so in this, for these seven pages, we're going to review and create the brains of this question bot. And the main point of it is to response, a response to a question. So for example, we have response to question returns a string, returns sorry, what was that? Now we can look, we can ask questions, look at the answers in the sidebar. So it says, well, how are you is the question and the response, sorry, what was that? Uh, I said, how are you? Uh, what was that? Oh, never mind. Sorry, what was that? So this doesn't make for great conversation. Gives the same answer regardless of the question. All right, let's change it. Let's go to the next one. So here we make a function that gives different answers based on the first word of the question. So has prefix is a method to test if a string contains or begins with another string. So Swift programming dot has prefix Swift returns true. Swift programming dot has prefix programming returns false. Again, prefix is the first word of a string. So let's amend the function and test below to respond to different first words. How about adding answers for who, what, why, and how? So response to question, a string, let's see, if question has prefix hello, return why hello there. Else if question has prefix where, return to the north. Else return that really depends. So here he says hello there. And it says where should I go on holiday? It says to the north. You may notice the where works, but where or where does not. You'll learn how to deal with that on the next page. All right. Let's try some different first words. We could say, we could check for hi. And then see what happens if I say hi there. And then see how that well, responds. Well, hello there. So notice here, the difference is these are all lowercase and that works, but what if we change that to uppercase and we say, where should I go? Notice how it breaks because it doesn't, it doesn't identify it properly. So let's figure out how to fix that. Dealing with cases. So this Previously, the function worked against a list of possibilities, but it only works if the strings were of the same case. For example, we say where is equal to where. That's true because they're identical, but where with a capital W is when we say is equal to where, it's false. Same here. Now, you could add a whole bunch of prefix checks to do that, but instead, there's a better way, and that is changing the case of the text before you try to match it. So there's the lowercase method. So we say, question, where are the cookies? Lowercase, question dot lowercase, and then what happens, notice here, it changes the text all lowercase. Now, when you check for has prefix where, it returns true. Okay, so now let's check, uh, change the function below to work with any case of question text. All right. So first thing we could do is change it to say, let lowered question, we could just do the same thing we did above, equals question dot lowered case. See that? Now I change the question here to lowered question. And notice that works. See, if I change this, what if I change this to say, hello. And it still works. All right, let's go next. 
So we've got some general answers. We can also include special answers to specific questions. So here's this same thing that we did here. We could say if lower question equal is equal to where are the cookies, then we can return in the cookie jar. So now it says this function doesn't work. The first if statement asks if the question starts with where, which it does. This means the later statements are never tested. Change the function above so that you get the answer in the cookie jar to the question, where are the cookies? So right now it says where, and it says return to the north. What we could do is we could pull this out. And I'm going to press Command X to cut that. And then I'm going to put this as its own if statement, and I'm going to delete the else. So now I have its own if statement. So now this will always be checked. It says will never be returned. Oh, <laughs> that's because we should call this first up here. So here we, we check for a specific answer up here, and then if that fails, then we just go on to check for where. So where are the cookies? In the cookie jar. So now let's change this. What if I said, where should we go? Notice how it doesn't match the where are the cookies now. It matches, it finds has prefix. See how that works? All right, to the north. All right, let's go to default answers. So far, uh, we match, there are no matches if any of the if statements, then a default is returned. So in this exercise, we'll be making it more interesting by giving a default answer depending on the length of the question that was answered. You can get the length of a string like this, hello.characters.count. Notice it returns five, so that means there are five characters in this string. If you want to choose from one or two different default answers, you can use the remainder operator to get the remainder of the count after dividing by two. So we can say characters.count remainder two is resolves to one. That means you can convert any string into zero or one, then use the result to decide on an answer. Okay. Let's look at this code. So here we say, where are the cookies? Return in the cookie jar. Else, if lower question has prefix where, we turn to the north. Else, then we can check here. Question.characters.count modulus 2, or remainder 2 as they call it. If default is equal to 0, then return that really depends. Else, return ask me again tomorrow. So now, notice when you ask more questions, depending on the length of the question, you get a different answer. A different default answer. Now amend the function above to choose from one or three default answers instead of two. All right, so from one of three, hint question characters at modulus three will give you a result of zero, one, or two. Ah, there we go. So let's change this modulus to three. And then we change this, else if default number is equal to 1, then we ask, or we say else return my sources say no. <laughs> so now we have three options. So let's see how that resolves. Notice says, can I have a cookie? My sources say no. Ha, huh. that's funny. I didn't even try that and it worked. Okay, putting it all together. Putting it all together. In this exercise, you'll combine the things you've learned from the last few pages. Update this response to question function so that it gives the answers specified below. It's okay to go back and look at the code from earlier pages. All right, so these answers should be why hello there where we say response 
So we can say, first we're gonna check if, well, let's first notice how we have two different cases. We have hello and lowercase hello. So let's say let Lord question equal question dot lowercase. Then we check if lowered question dot has prefix of hello return why hello there. Okay. Else return question mark. Okay. So now those return why hello there, why hello there. All right. These answers should be to the north. So where, where should I go? So we can say else if lowered question dot has prefix where let me add the race there and then say else so now that's complete okay then we return to the north oops north Okay, so let's check that. Hello there, hello there, to the north, to the north. Now this answer should be in the cookie jar. Where are the cookies? There's other, okay, so now let's do the where are the cookies. Let's add another else if, else if, and then a brace, else, okay. Else if lowered question is equal to where are the cookies? Oops, question mark. Return in the cookie jar. See if we got that right in the cookie jar exclamation point. Where are the cookies? All right, let's see if that resolves. Oh, let's see. It's having a wait to think a minute. All right, it doesn't like it. Let's see what, let's go back. Let's take a look at the previous example. Well, we, we did it a couple of ways. Let's just take a look at the previous. If Lord question, okay, let's add that at the top. But it's the same, let's see. Else if lowered question equal to where are the cookies? So it's getting stuck. It doesn't like. Well, it's it's got re it's not it's gotten stuck. So if we stop it, and we try to run it again. Unfortunately. Xcode gets stuck. So I'm just going to exit that and quit Xcode. Then I'm going to go back to the question answerer. And let's see if this helps it any better. All right. So now let's review where we are. To the north. All right. 
So that didn't work because there's we I forgot and it was actually already in the other question. We want to ask this first. So let's cut this. Command X. And let's make that this the first question. And then add else if. Okay, now let's check that out in the cookie jar. Perfect. Then any other question you have, you can answer any way you like. So here's some example questions you could test for. You could add or retest. So can I have a cookie? So let's just check for, let's do one more. Let's just say else if lowered question dot has prefix can. And then close that with else. So return my sources say no. So let's see how that goes. In the cookie jar, my sources say no. Awesome. All right. You'll be cutting and pasting when you highlight it, copy, blah, blah, blah. It looks something like this. Yep. Okay. So now we've created the question bot brain in a couple of different playgrounds. So now the next part is to put this into an app. So look for the next video where we add this to an app.